Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with my friend Jenny Webb. Welcome, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny is um, an independent scholar in Mormon studies, and she's worked for years in academic publishing. She's also currently the head of project management for global, global games at Robinsberger. And she's working on a PhD on the charismatic in the Book of Mormon. And she's the past vice, or sorry, past president of Mormon Scholars in the Humanities. It was a while ago, but yeah. Yeah, yeah and did a wonderful job. <laughs> that was how I first got to know Jenny. Um, so today we're looking um, at the scriptures Moroni 1 through 6. And the piece we're looking at is by Anne Gregerson. It's called Offering. Uh, this is from 2016. It's made of clay and fabric and resin. And it actually won a merit award in the 11th International Art Competition uh, by the church a few years ago. So Jenny, I know the artist said uh, this piece is based on a scripture in Omni, but I see a lot of parallels with these scriptures in Moroni too. Can you tell us a little bit about the original scripture in Omni and then how it might relate here? Yeah, so where I see the connection in Omni um, at the very end, we have Malachi writing um, and explaining where uh, things are going with King Benjamin. And he has in Omni 26 a verse that says, uh, And now, my beloved brethren, I would that ye should come unto Christ. And we've heard this verse before. You know, mm -hmm. it's this great invitational uh, verse in the Book of Mormon. So, and now my beloved brethren, I would that you should come unto Christ who is the Holy One of Israel and partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption. Yea, come unto him and offer your whole souls as an offering unto him and continue in fasting and praying and enduring or endure to the end. And as the Lord liveth, ye will be saved. And that that distinction that the verse sets up there, mm. offer your whole souls as an offering, mm. really sets that word offering apart as something distinctive um, and special. It's not just something, an action that we're doing, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we hear um, the word offering and it comes across as like a verb, like something that we're doing, uh -huh. but it's an actual... Thing. There's a oh. thingness or a quality to it. You know, you make an offering, hmm. or you offer, mm -hmm. offers the verb, and what you offer is the offering. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain materiality in this verse hmm. uh, that I think this piece really captures, mm -hmm. uh, just based off of the fact that, you know, A, it's a sculpture, yeah. but also the way that the piece itself um, emphasizes the materiality of the body, the materiality of the flesh, mm. and the way that uh, the fabric texture, everything yeah. in it really yeah. gets into um, the concept of offering as not just an act that we do, but something about who we are and mm. how we are living our lives mm. here on the earth in our bodies. Wow, I love that connection to embodiment and, and the way we're offering that in that material way. I hadn't really thought about that. And I do love the fabric and the mm -hmm. way she's sort of plastered over it, um, but it has this, these different textures in the piece. Yeah. So, and then in Moroni, we've got, this is the very end of the Book of mm -hmm. Mormon, yeah. almost the very end. And Moroni basically starts out saying, I didn't know I was going to still be around. Right. <laughs> it's like, hey, bonus, more yeah. scripture. Yeah. I've got a few extra plates here, so and I'm still alive, so I'm going to just write a few more things. Yeah. And like, so what are the things that he feels are important to record in these last moments? This I find really fascinating because where Moroni goes here at the very end is actually straight back to Third Nephi, mm. and um, he says, "What I want to do is give you the words." Um, that Christ said to the disciples. Right. So yeah, to me it's like he's at the very end and he's 
there are all these things that I think as members of the church, like we look at it and we're like, wait, these are like the central things, yeah. right? Yeah. Like sacrament, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost, baptism, baptism. ordination. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like fourth article of faith, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, or like, and yet he's put them in here at the end. Like they weren't even uh, going to be in here, uh, except for the fact that he had a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. These are the important things he wanted to pass on. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's actually look mm -hmm. at uh, chapter six. Okay. Because here I think is where this piece uh, really can tie into this concept of offering. So he says he's going to talk about baptism, and uh, in verse 2, he says, Neither did they receive any unto baptism, save they came forth with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and witnessed unto the church that they truly repented of all their sins. And none were received unto baptism, save they took upon them the name of Christ, having a, a determination to serve him to the end. And so there's this sense of, there's this sense of offering mm -hmm. in what we bring yeah. when we're baptized. Mm -hmm. That what we're bringing is um, the broken heart and the contrite spirit. And I love that juxtaposition of the inner mm -hmm. and the outer, yeah. right? Yeah. Like the, the heart, and the spirit. So again, the flesh and the soul. Yeah. And the two of those together mm -hmm. are what are offered up or what constitute the offering right. for baptism. Yeah, I, I see that in this piece too, where you, like you were saying, there's this real material mm -hmm. um, texture and, and like it takes up space three dimensionally, but then also the figure's face looks very introspective. There's a real ethereal quality, right? Yeah. Like, we're not sure where she's looking. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can see where she's looking, and it's it's not at me. And, and but when you look at her, I mean, Jenny, I'm not sure. Like, ha, is she looking up, or is she looking down? Yeah, I, I'm not and sure. I, I mean, can't tell. I see it more as like a more inward sort of yeah. like gaze where mm -hmm. she's having some sort of internal dialogue. It's this, it's this medial place. It's this place between, for me, I look at this as a, as a piece that really concretizes a space between heaven and earth, which is really okay. tricky. Okay, yeah. Because mm -hmm. everything about it can go one way or the other. Uh-huh. So she could be, she could have just seen something rapturous, right? Sure, yeah. And be receiving that and like reflecting on that. And, you know, it could be that moment right before joy. Look at her face and then just imagine breaking into joy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. Or then I look at it and I'm like, or she could have just, you know, be offering up our greatest sorrow and uh -huh. and I can see that as well. Yeah, I love how the piece really leaves room mm -hmm. for interpretation by the viewer and that's kind of unique in our LDS visual culture where so much of our art is narrative mm -hmm. and meant to convey a specific message very clearly. I like that this is more conceptual and leaves room for you to bring your own feelings and thoughts to it. And, and for me, yeah, there's something about her vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. That in this act of offering, I mean, look at her pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that symbolism of these open palms, like yeah. stretched out and open. Like, are those palms yeah. that are receiving something? Oh. Mm -hmm. Or are those palms that are giving something? Mm -hmm. Maybe both. Right? Yeah. yeah. And are, are those arms, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking as a mother, right? Like, mm. I'm thinking of that weight of holding you know, holding a top or holding a holding a child, um, and it's it's a. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. It's a burden, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a burden that's a blessing, right? You know, mm -hmm. and you can carry things, and then also get. And but at the same time, like you're giving oh. them up, and there's that tension. Oh yeah. In her arms, the way that she's posed the arms, 
this is an unnatural, like you don't walk around like this no. yeah. in real life. Like we would look, no, 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 no. Come on, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Nobody does that. And yet here, it almost feels natural right yeah. like yeah. like but this is to me to me this is like a pose uh, that feels like an ordinance or a pose that mm. feels like scripture or a pose that you would put your body in yeah. to say i'm trying to i'm trying to gain god's attention mm. okay yeah mm -hmm. I like that you related this to motherhood um, because it's really striking to me that this image is focused on a female figure, mm -hmm. which we don't have a lot of females in the Book of Mormon, hardly any that are named, and um, they just don't show up in the art as much either of the yeah. Book of Mormon. Uh, and I like that this this whole piece is really centered on a female experience of, like you said, finding that bridge between heaven and earth and coming to God. So Jenny, as we've been talking about this piece, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes by Thomas Merton, who is a 20th century uh, Christian thinker. Um, we've been talking a lot about uh, liminality, heaven and earth, all of, these, all of these concepts. And I just, I wanna read this for you. So I think, I think it captures a lot of the essence of what's going on here. He says, do not depend on the hope of results. When you are doing the sort of work that you have taken on, essentially an apostolic work, you may have to face the fact that your work will be apparently worthless and even achieve no result at all, if not perhaps results opposite to what you expect. It's totally my life. <laughs> As you get used to this idea, you start more and more to concentrate not on the results, but on the value, the rightness, the truth of the work itself. You gradually struggle less and less for an idea and more and more for specific people. And in the end, it is the reality of personal relationship that saves everything. And I love the idea, I think a lot of times in our faith, we can go in gung-ho saying, I'm going to do this in order to get this result. Right. I'm, going to, I'm going to put this into the machine yeah. to get, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we can do this with the concept of making an offering. I'm going to offer this to God, and this will be the result. Right. And I don't, I don't think that's what's going on here, not theologically, mm -hmm. and not, not aesthetically, and do not depend on the hope of results. That's not what we're doing. It's the work itself. It's the living of yeah. life mm -hmm. as a human being in your body, caught between heaven and earth, taking a moment to sit and reflect on that and realize this is who I am. I'm, I'm not my label. I'm not my calling. I'm, mm -hmm. I am someone with divinity. And in that divinity, I find personal relationships. And those relationships then in themselves are sacralized and sanctified. Mm. And that's, that's really, to me, the concept of offering is we offer ourselves, mm -hmm. our whole selves up. It's a risk, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's a beautiful risk. Yeah. And with a broken heart, right? Isn't that yeah. what the scriptures say? That that's, that's part of offering, is offering it with a broken heart. Yeah, the broken heart and mm -hmm. the contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, 
it's really it's really a thought provoking piece and it's really worth to me reflecting on and uh, it just it shows me the value um, yeah it shows me the value of art mm. we need these spaces yeah. so that we don't have um, we need these spaces to open up that uh, that those dialogues within ourselves yeah well I've really enjoyed talking with you today and um, you've helped me see this piece and see these scriptures in a new way that I hadn't considered. So thank you so much for joining us and talking with us today. Thanks, Jenny. Loved being here.